fixing path errors, and organizing your scripts, this time on Hacktip. Welcome to Hacktip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morris, and today we are fixing path and directory errors for our shell scripts. So last time on Hacktip, I showed you how to write a very basic shell script using gedit. We executed it with no issues and using bash, but now we are going to follow up with some common issues that you may experience and explain why these happen and how to fix it. So I have already covered permissions, which is a common step that folks may forget to do. This step is very important because if you don't make your text file executable, it will just read as a simple text file, not executed in the terminal like it should because it's read as text instead. So you'll see your comment and everything else when you try to run that in bash, unless you run into errors if you try to run it incorrectly. So yay, text files, permissions can give you errors. Now the next problems that you may experience have to do with directories and the path variable. So instead of running an executable with that dot forward slash before it, you could also use another directory name as well. Now a pro tip, you will notice that if you don't include the path name before the file, then it kind of borks out and it errors out. So I'll show you what that looks like if you just don't include that dot slash. It's going to say command not found. Now why is that? Because even though you typed an executable's name into your terminal, the system is not going to search that current directory for your executable file. It will only search for executable files inside specific directories, which are listed in the path environmental variable. And we have also covered variables on the show. So for example, if you type in echo dollar sign path and hit enter, you can see this entire list of all these directories. Now you will notice that word bin is repeated many, many times here. Other bash programs like LS, for example, are already in the bin folder. So it automatically knows where to find it whenever you try to run that executable. So if I hit LS, it's already gonna know what I wanna do. I don't have to put that backslash ahead of it because it already knows where to look. That's why it works. Now most Linux operating systems already have a slash home slash me slash bin listed in the path variable. And for mine, that is located at the very front. You'll notice it right here if I highlight it, home snubs bin, so very easy to find. And that directory can be used to store all of your executables that you plan to use just for yourself. So let's make a bin directory that we can actually store all of our programs in. So to do so, type in make directory bin. And I'm gonna go ahead and change back to my home directory and then mkdir bin to make that directory. Now you will notice that it already exists. And the reason why is because I already made it. So go figure. But that's where you will put it. And once you do that, you will notice that the bin directory is now created in your home folder. And then you move your executable script into bin by typing in wherever it is and moving it over to bin. So that's MV, mine is on the desktop and it's called Hey World. And then I just type in bin. So now if I change directory to bin and I LS that, you will notice that I have two files in here. I have hello world, which was my test file before I recorded. And I have Hey World, which is the one that I'm doing right now. Now I'm gonna hit CD dot dot to change my directory back to my home directory. So now, no matter which directory I'm in, if I type in Hey World, it's going to execute that. That's because Bash is already looking for the file inside the path variable because it now it is included. So there is no need to specify the directory at the beginning of the command. That is so cool. Now, if your path variable does not have that folder, you can also add it like so. To do so, you would need to edit your bash RC file. So I can simply type in gedit, or I could do nano. I'm gonna do nano, because I like nano. Dot bash RC, hit enter, and this is going to open up the bash RC file in nano. Now, bin is already included, so I'm not gonna save this out when I do the edits, but if I scroll all the way down, I can add a new line to my bash RC file, and this is going to be export path equals I call that the squiggly forward slash bin colon quotes dollar sign path all uppercase and close it out with quotes again and then go ahead and save that and then close out of the bash rc file now to make sure that your terminal remembers that change all you have to do is simply type in period period and then bash rc 
enter, and it will remember those changes. Now these will also change in future terminal sessions as well, so anytime you reboot your computer, you will still see that new bin folder or directory in your path variable so you won't have to change it every single time. Now, you don't have to stick your shell scripts in bin if you don't want to. You can choose another folder. It is totally up to you, and I really don't care. These are just the defaults and most commonly used options because they're easy, and they're already in path for most Linux operating systems. So try out your own shell script, and I will be right back after a word from our sponsor. IT people know how it is. When all of those alerts and tickets light up your monitor like a Christmas tree, you are not being productive, you are just stressed out. No mere mortal can analyze all of those alerts and respond to all of those tickets. Good news though, you can immediately reduce that noise with Moogsoft AI Ops. Moogsoft AI Ops is artificial intelligence for IT operations that reduces your IT alerts and tickets by up to 90%, guaranteed. Moogsoft AI Ops platform integrates with all of your existing IT tools and their patented technology correlates events into actionable work items. They're called situations, so that you can focus on tackling the stuff that really matters. In one case study, a company was experiencing tons of alert fatigue, lack of context, thousands of tickets, and Moogsoft came in and they fixed these issues and they saw a 33% reduction in mean time to restore in the business. Now with Moogsoft AI Ops, you can reduce your IT alerts and tickets by up to 99% right now. Visit Moogsoft.com to get a demo. That is M-O-O-G-S-O-F-T dot com. Moogsoft.com. We are now back with writing shell scripts. Now remember when writing those shell scripts that it is very important that these be easily readable, especially if you are sharing them with your teacher, your peers, your coworkers, a boss, or your friends as well. They not only will appreciate you for including things like comments and indentations, but it will also make it very easy to fix any scripting issues in the future because it will be organized and it will also be more efficient. Now I hope that you enjoyed writing your first shell script as much as I did because hashtag nerd life. We will talk more about shell scripts next time on Hack Tip, but until then I want to hear your comments and feedback, so make sure to comment below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to check out our sister show Hack 5 for more great stuff just like this. I'll be here on the channel reminding you to trust your technolust.